Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Leah and I am the owner and artisan at Leah Noel Design Co. Today we are going to start a tutorial on this buffet. This is going to be kind of a mixed media um, creative design process. So I'm not exactly sure what direction we're gonna go, but I'm sure you already know because there will be a cover photo on this video. So as I'm getting started, I'm just kind of laying out the framework. I know that I want a lot of different things going on. Mainly, I want a darker color on top that fades into a lighter color that has the transition of this transfer called Flower Child, which I designed from Dixie Belle Paint Company. And I'm thinking I wanna do some black and white stripes in the center here. Who knows if that'll actually happen. My clients have been requesting just crazy fun pieces, so that's where we're headed. So, I hope you enjoy the process. Okay, so we're gonna start with a 50-50 mix of peony and amethyst, which is a pink and a purple. It's about a 50-50 mix. It really doesn't matter. Um, it's just until you get a color you like, kind of like my headband here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with that and I'm gonna go through the top and then I'm gonna blend it into peony. The reason I'm using peony is because it's a pretty pink and I actually want to use the color flamingo. Now, Flamingo from Dixie Belle is thin. It doesn't really get good coverage. So what I've found is if I can use a pink underneath, it will have better coverage. Um, and I kind of like the two-toned look of the paints. It, it works in my favor for the style that we're going for. So to blend, I'm gonna go ahead and just wet my brush. My uh, husband and son are snow blowing outside. We are in the middle of a snowstorm right now. And I'm gonna start over here. Next, I'm gonna blend this door right here. And I'm gonna kind of explain what my process is. So even though I do not know right now if I'm gonna do this over the whole piece, I'm gonna go ahead and just lay the paint. And then I can just kind of decide after if I'm gonna use a raised stencil or taco patch paper or whatever. The paint underneath won't hurt anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to blend this. So this is peony. Like I said, this is still just a base coat. So I'm gonna blend my first base coat with peony and then my second one with Flamingo. And even though I'm gonna have um, the flowers over this, I still wanna make it a pretty good blend. And these two colors are pretty similar in, in the color family, but they blend really nicely together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that on the whole entire piece. Okay, so we have our base coat on. I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm just gonna add Flamingo to all of the pink parts. And then this I did in silk white cap. I just painted it white because I'm gonna do black and white stripes. But I wanna get my black and white stripes going and on before I do my blend because I kinda wanna blend them in to the paint finish as well so it's not like such a clean, crisp cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint Flamingo over the top or over all of the legs and I think I may actually blend in a little Florida orange on the next coat. So we'll see, let's go for it. Okay, so I figured out the way I wanna lay the color over the peony here. So you can kind of see what direction I'm going. I'm going more for the, the flamingo orange color and so all I'm doing is I'm dipping my brush in the Flamingo and I'm just blending Flamingo and Florida Orange right here on my piece. So I'm gonna spray some water and I'm gonna apply my flip Flamingo. And then I'm just gonna dip my brush in the Florida Orange and I'm gonna mix Florida Orange in, you can kind of see it. And I'm not doing any sort of blending technique. 
I'm just kind of laying it on the piece. And what's happening is we still have the peony showing through a little bit, but we're just getting a two-toned look without any effort in blending. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that on the legs and everything else. And it's a perfect technique because we don't wanna have to blend legs, right? We don't wanna have to do a bait. So we just kinda want that two-toned look without having to really do a lot of effort. And I am using quite a bit of water just to keep my paint fluid and moving. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish laying the coat of flamingo and orange on the rest of the piece. Hey guys, I am gonna go ahead and blend the side of this with you. Um, I went ahead and did the front, but this is just pretty much what I'm using. I'm using Aubergine and then our mix of Amethyst and Plum Crazy in this bowl. And they're gonna blend really easily together because they're super close in pigment. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I like to mist this a little bit just to get that chalk paint lubricated a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put, this is Aubergine. I'm gonna go ahead and put this all over, really getting in all my corners so that they're covered. I like to do like a stipple motion like this and then just kind of smooth it over. And then I'm gonna go ahead, get this going over here. And I'm gonna make like a horseshoe. I'm just gonna frame out my edges. And then I'm gonna take my lighter color and I'm gonna put it in here. And what's happening is this is just kind of making everything glow. Um, blending two colors with this kind of look on top here is just gonna make it kind of glow. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna carry this color up into here, but I'm gonna let this dry as my base, or as my like first coat. And then I will blend this color in. ahead and let our purple dry and then we're going to carry our orange up and blend it into the purple once it's all dry. Hey guys we are back and we are going to go ahead and do a blending technique with yellow uh, kernel mustard mixed with a little daisy flamingo and we're going to use a little bit of the purple too just to make this all come together. The main ingredient for this is a flat round brush. I have three out because I find that it's easier to separate the colors and it just makes your job so much easier than just using one. If you only have one brush, you can just use a regular paintbrush to kind of lay your paint and then blend over it. But um, you know, it just kind of depends on what you have available to you and how you want to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start by, this is my base coat. So. I want to start blending these two colors together. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of flamingo and I like to just dip my brush and then kind of like spread the paint evenly on the plate and I'm going to mist my piece and I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of start putting it on. Now one of the things I am going to do is I'm going to stipple the corners of this piece just to make sure I have the paint coverage in the spots where I need it. So 
So I'm using my flamingo and I'm just gonna go ahead and get that on. And my transfer is gonna be over here. So this blend doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be good because the transfer is a little bit translucent. So I kind of hold this brush like a third or like a kindergartner with a big crayon. And then I'm gonna go in with my yellow and I'm gonna miss my brush. I've been, I used it on the other side, so it's, a, it's drying out just a little bit. So I'm just gonna wet it to soften it. Um, and I'm just gonna mist this and go in. And I'm not really looking for an even blend. And you can see how that flat round brush just made that blend in so perfect. So this is the key. You could totally have just laid this with a regular brush and then took your flat round brush and put it through the middle. Um, I do find that these round brushes really are a rock star on the legs like these because they're a little bit harder, more of a challenge to blend. Next I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the purple. And for this one, I'm just using my brush and I'm just gonna apply a little bit of paint through here. And then I'm gonna grab, this has kind of been my neutral brush. I really haven't dipped this in any paint. I'm gonna mist it. And I'm gonna keep my, my brush blend a little higher because I don't really wanna, I just kinda want this line to blend in a little more and I will have to do two coats. So I will come back through and do the second coat the exact same way. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry and I'm just gonna do the exact same process um, on the second coat. And then that transfer is gonna go right over here. So it's gonna make it a little bit easier. Some of the things that we've discussed painting this piece is that the closer in proximity that the colors are, the easier they blend. So that's why these purples blended really easily together um, and our orange and our apricot. So these two colors are a little bit harder of a blend together. That's why I like to put that transfer there so that transition doesn't have to be like flawless. We want it good, but it doesn't have to be flawless. So that's a tip for you. Use those transfers to your benefit. All right, guys, we'll be back for the next step. Hey guys, I'm gonna do the second blend for you so you can see the process. So I'm actually gonna lay my paint with a paintbrush this time so that you can see kind of how that works. So this is Flamingo. And really I'm just gonna put some paint on the piece. So using kind of a, just putting paint on. And all the spots that need, need it, like right through here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the yellow, which is a Daisy and Colonel Mustard mix. I just mixed them together, just kind of use them up. Um, you can use either color. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and lay this paint on no real rhyme or reason, okay? Just put the paint on the piece. Um, and then I'm gonna use my purpley mix. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put my purpley mix right here, stipple it right here a little bit, this corner, okay? And I'm gonna grab my aubergine, which is my darker color, my darker purple. And I don't really wanna go above this. And I got quite a bit of paint on here, so I wanna make sure I'm, I don't have too, too much. So I'm not gonna spread it all over. That's about enough. And then I'm just gonna take my flat round brush, and this is a really good tip if you just have one brush. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna miss the bottom, just cause I don't have any paint down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start through here. I'm just gonna blend and I'm gonna add water as I need to. Some of my paint's drier. So if it's drying or if it's pulling at all, my flamingo seems to be pulling a little bit. And the reason is, is because it's, it's an old jar. Okay. I've had this for quite some time. And the longer the lid stays off of your paint, the thicker it gets. So 
keep that in mind. Um, I do like to buy these smaller jars now because I don't really ever use like a whole big jar. Um, but just keep that in mind. The longer you leave the, the lid off of your paint, the thicker it's gonna get. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this on a rag. I'm gonna, so I'm just gonna wipe my brush off just to kind of clean it. And I'm gonna mist my paint because it's starting to get a little dry. And I wanna finish my lighter color down here before I kind of travel into my darker color on top, okay? You can see it's already like way better. There's no line. Once I put the transfer over this, oh my gosh, it's gonna be amazing. Hey guys, we're ready for our next step. So I'm gonna show you how to use uh, gilding wax with a stencil. So I just have this hanging here with some painter's tape and I am gonna use my gilding wax in lilac and gold and I have it on cardboard, not a styrofoam plate because the gilding wax will eat through styrofoam. And the way I have it positioned is I just have it kind of going over this side and I'm gonna fill in with some flowers and possibly go over this corner a little bit more. Um, so I'm not gonna do my whole stencil. I'm probably gonna cut it off right about here and kind of leave this edge where I'm not touching this line right here. So I'm gonna put, a, I'm gonna start with a little bit of gold and I'm gonna just rub it on here and I'm just using a flat, a small flat stencil brush. I'm gonna hold this on and I'm just gonna go ahead and go for it. And now I'm gonna go into my lilac. Now the lilac is a chameleon wax, so it's gonna look different on this peachy color because it's lighter, and it's gonna look darker on this purple color because it's darker, and it changes like a chameleon. So we'll see that when we pull that off. But I'm not worried about mixing it with my gold. In fact, I want to mix it with my gold so that it blends a little bit more. So we have a nice faded look. Um, one of the things I do want to point out is that gilding wax dries really fast, but when you're using the stencil, a lot of times you're, you get a little bit of a ridge. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry completely before I do anything else to it. I'm probably going to give it about at least a few hours to let this just dry completely so that it doesn't smear at all. Thank you. 